What's happening guys? It's your boy Zach back in the house with another workout video and you know what time it is. It's all about shoulders and then arms. These were separate workouts but I wanted to capture all the footage for both days and put together a little longer video so you guys are going to hear me talk quite a bit through both of these workouts. I feel like there's some benefit to you guys kind of hearing my mindset and what I'm thinking about as I structure my workouts. Uh, first, you can see here I started with a barbell overhead press. Uh, I did four sets of 10 to 12 reps with 95 pounds. I haven't been doing standing OHP recently, but you, as you guys know, I have been doing some sort of dumbbell pressing for a while now. But I do, as I mentioned in, in previous videos, want to get back into the barbell compound lifts, so that's what I'm doing. Um, after finishing with the OHP, I moved on to a seated dumbbell Arnold press. Now the reps for these are a little bit higher, 12 to 15, 12 minimum. I really, really like that exercise. It, you got to go super light. You really got to focus on form. Uh, and just a great way to get more range of motion to really hit your shoulders at the bottom of the movement as you drive out of the hole. After that, I start or I moved on to a seated behind the neck press. I prefer to do this after two, two exercises or so uh, to get my shoulders warm, nice and loose. So make sure that's not something you're doing first, but do it after a couple pressing movements so your shoulder joints are warm. After that, went ahead and started with some lateral delt work with some seated lateral raises right here. Once again, these reps are minimum 15, you know, even as high as 20. And then I moved on to a one arm lateral raise. You can see here, I haven't done the cable raises much lately, but uh, today I wanted to make sure I hit them and I actually went a little bit lighter than I usually do to work on form. I've noticed in old videos, I was really swinging and sort of using momentum at the bottom especially, and I could hear this click repeatedly. And that was telling me that I was kind of dropping my arm and then trying to drive back up from the bottom position instead of making it nice and smooth. So today was all about being smooth on these and it felt really good. Um, even my left shoulder cooperated really well, which is awesome. That's something I want to talk about too. Uh, I used to make my work more, my warm ups, excuse me, really, really complicated. And now they're so simple. I walk on the stair stepper for 10 to 15 minutes until I'm sweaty. My heart rate's somewhere between 120 and 140 beats per minute. And then I do some static stretching for either my upper body or lower body, depending on the day. And then I start working out and it's, <laughs> I, I'm getting no left shoulder pain. Uh, it's just been wonderful. So I would highly encourage you guys to start making your warm ups simpler. There's so much information out there now that everybody's trying to find the perfect scientific warm up and you sort of lose the concept that just increasing your core temperature and static stretching a little bit people have been exercising without foam rolling doing dynamic warm ups doing corrective exercises and static stretching uh, since the beginning of time so understand the human body is less fragile than you think so i would encourage you guys to try to make your warm ups a little simpler that way you can get into your workouts quicker and also still reap the benefits of getting a sweat going, making sure your joints are lubricated. Uh, so back to the workout, you can see I did some front delt raises here. I did a seated front delt raise where I'm bringing the dumbbells up, touching them as I bring them up with my palms down. And then right here I'm standing with a neutral grip and I like to switch it up between those two because that standing variation I can handle about five to ten more pounds per hand get a little bit more momentum going and overload the front delts a bit more versus being more strict on the seated variation and then you guys know I'm always hitting the rear delts I usually do them towards the end of the workout but I always include three movements so first here is a chest supported rear delt raise felt really good with these um, you know, my big goal here is to try to make my arms symmetrical as I drive my elbows back. That's one thing I've noticed on film is my arms don't move symmetrically back. So a lot of times my left shoulder doesn't move quite as far back as my right one does, which also rears its ugly head when I'm doing chest uh, cable flies. And then after that, did some high rear delt pull aparts right here. Once again, these actually felt pretty light today, which was really nice. Uh, 15 to 20 reps, three to four sets, 
rest is minimal. You guys know I don't rest long on this kind of stuff. I'm resting 30 seconds on my pressing, 60 seconds, and then you know on my bigger stuff maybe 90 seconds. And you know the rest is just never longer than 90 to 120 seconds. No longer am I resting three to five minutes, and that's because I don't do you know super super heavy strength work. But for those out there that are trying to do hypertrophy work, definitely time your sets and get used to those lower rest times. It will pay off in the long run. You'll hold a better pump, you'll get a better sweat going, and it's just good to keep momentum going with these sorts of routines that are higher volume with a lot more exercise variety than you'd see with a strength training program. And then after that, I haven't actually done this one in a while, but a rear, uh, rear delt bent over, just one arm fly. And uh, this this one is with that harder grip I've talked about before, where basically you're, you can see my pinky is driving up towards the ceiling. And these actually felt pretty good. I've been skipping out on these just recently, I mean the past couple months, because I was getting some lower back tightness, but these felt pretty good today. And I am gonna put them back in the rotation for the next four to six weeks to see if I can't continue to bring up my rear delts and my upper back. And these, once again, 15 to 20 reps. Now this machine, I wasn't expecting to do this at all. <laughs> this was just kind of a random thing I did. I was waiting for Olivia, so I decided to do four sets of 15 reps with a 45 on each side. So my shoulders were super warm. And the reason I haven't been doing this machine is because, you know, one of the knocks on machines is that the, the machine sort of forces you to move through its range of motion. So if your joints don't move well, you're gonna have a hard time because the machine's gonna move sort of straight up and down. But this felt really good after I had done so much shoulder volume that I am gonna do this towards the end of my workouts just to get some extra stimulation. So that's it for the shoulder workout, guys. We're gonna move on to the arm workout, which I did yesterday. I'm recording this audio commentary on October 21st. So I did a ton more bicep volume than tricep volume. That was sort of by accident. I was just feeling really good with my biceps and usually I try to split them 50-50. But today I'd say I did about 70% biceps and 30% triceps. I started off with, I actually started off, I didn't, I didn't film it. I started off with straight bar curls and I did 80 pounds for, uh, I did like 40 pounds for a set of 20. Then I did 80 pounds for three sets of 10 to 12, then I did 60 for a back down set of 15. And as you can see there, I did the seated alternating part or dumbbell curl. Uh, after that, moved on to a cable curl with a wide grip and then a close grip for eight to 10 reps each. I really enjoy this one, I get a great pump and I need to continue to do cable stuff because the constant tension on the way down on the eccentric portion just leads to a huge pump. I really, really enjoy this exercise a lot and I need to put it in the rotation more often. Now, usually I only do two supinated bicep variations, but I did three today. And that might be something I look at doing more often, just because I wanna to continue to build the peak of my arm. And I feel like my arms are progressing really well, but just doing maybe just a small little switch up will be a good thing for me in the long run. After that, I moved on to some hammer curls and I actually felt really strong today. I ended up doing 35, 37 and a half and 40 for sets of 12. The 40 I stuck with for two or three sets. I can't remember right now, uh, but these felt really, really good. Uh, I just, that day or the night before, so the 19th, I ate a little bit more calories, probably about 500 more than I usually do or that I have been lately and it really paid off in the gym. I was getting a better pump. I just felt fuller overall. Uh, so I am incorporating a little bit more calories right now because my body weight is down about two or three pounds these last two or three weeks. And I really want it to hold right around 180. I don't want to be much lower at this point. Uh, so yeah, ripping another set here. Once again, like I said, felt really, really good. Felt strong on these as well. Uh, you can see I do a little bit more of a crossbody hammer curl rather than a traditional hammer curl where the dumbbell is coming straight up to the anterior delt. This is more to your, your chest, kind of right under your chin. After I finished there, I moved on to a seated preacher curl. 
Uh, first set, I put on film and I noticed my right elbow was flared out quite a bit. So that's the beauty of being able to get on film is you can start to make course corrections and you know form corrections with what you're doing. You're not always going to be symmetrical side to side. So being able to dial that in as much as possible to get those perfect reps I've talked about in the past is it's just a great tool in your tool belt to be able to see exactly what you're doing on film, see if you can't correct some things, whether you're getting pain or you just don't feel the target muscle working. Get yourself on video, check out your form. You know, you don't want to be spending time in the gym and wasting time in the gym. I wasted a lot of time in my lifting career, most likely doing things wrong. And so I had to learn by trial by fire. And that's something I want people to avoid. I want you guys to be able to start making gains really quickly in your lifting career rather than 10 years down the road, you feel like you're just starting. And that's kind of how I feel. Uh, so that was the end of the bicep portion of the arm workout. After that, I moved on to triceps. I started with a seated overhead French press. And these felt great today. Uh, for those with shoulder problems, I would avoid this exercise. It does put some strain on your shoulders as your elbows bend. I did four sets of 12 reps. I felt really, really strong. After that, I moved on to a flat skull crusher, which I haven't done for a while. As you guys can see, I actually let my elbow roll back. If I keep my elbow in place, I definitely notice my elbow tendonitis flaring up a little bit, and I actually get some snapping of the triceps tendons. So I roll my elbows, and I still get a great contraction through my triceps. I just try to avoid my upper arm going past sort of perpendicular to the floor. If you're driving too far, uh, up and then the bar is coming forward more to your lower chest you need to you need to keep your elbows further back and that'll keep tension on your triceps and then right here this is actually the last exercise on video but I did do a reverse grip push down as well uh, you can see here I decided to do the rope I did high rep sets you know 20 25 reps and really tried to spread the rope this is one of my weakest lifts I just have a really hard time spreading the rope but I do want to bring up my lateral head especially on my right side so I'm going to continue to work on these. Got to work on your weaknesses if you want to get better. All right, guys, talking fast, but that is the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.